composite column of two different material. Part of it is steel, part of it is brass, is in this case. Sometime in your question that this will change. Of course, now I have an steel area, which area of a steel is equal to one and one, equal to one inch square. Now this is the, so inside of this is the steel. How do I solve that problem? Why this become indeterminate problem? And what is the reason? I have given this problem, and then people who do not pay attention to the detail, they put 23.9 kips both on a steel and on brass. Is this correct? No. When you push it something down with new material, like to your two hands, actually you're raising something, weight, both of them are contributing. Maybe if you are right-handed like me, maybe the right hand help more than the left. Everybody understand that. So <coughs> both steel and brass in this case are going to resist the, the force. So in other words, when I make a cut here, as we talked about, there is a normal force here. Normal means normal to the cross section. It means vertical here, but that means normal to this cross section, which is, looks like that. There is an end to the steel. There is an end to the Brass. So I can write N of the brass plus N. Notice I don't call it P because I don't want you to make that mistake. Because in the book it says sigma equal to P over A. But that is not the P. That's the internal force. Everybody understand that. I made that very clear. And N of steel, which are the normal forces applied to this section. Is that understood? Yes. Total must be equal to 23.9 kips. That we all agree is correct. Which means I use sigma if y equal to zero. Is that correct or not? Yes? Everybody with me? I cut it here. Let me do it properly because I got here. And there are ends going. This is end of the steel at the middle. And around that in this square tube, uh, here are ends going this. Is that correct or not? I cannot show it by one force because then you make this is going around. Yes, correct? But the two n together must be equal to p. Notice there is no sigma fx because this is axially loaded. Remember, there is no sigma f, there is no sigma m. Everybody see that? There, there is not the only thing I am writing is sigma fy equal to 0. One equation, however, two unknown, two n. Is that correct? How do I solve that? How do I divide? In other words, how do I have to divide this load between these two materials? Go by? Relation of strength. Ratio of the area, maybe. Good, good answer. So if, let's assume, this is not the right ratio. But let's say that the steel is twice as much area than brass. So this steel gets twice as much load of the brass. Yes? Mm -hmm. That's a concept being expressed. Does it make logic to us? Let's now change the steel to cotton. Is it going to have the same effect? If I ch take the steel out and put water in it or fill it with cotton, is it going to have the same effect as the steel? No. It's going to carry the same out? So that theory failed, yes or no? Or partially maybe correct, yes. What I'm talking about then, when I'm changing the material, I'm changing what? Elasticity. Modulus of? Elasticity. elasticity. Yes, you are right. The area is affecting. The more area I have, it should have more load logically, which is then not a bad idea. Remember that? But alone, no. Is that good? Then the type of material, as I said, my, 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 I'm right handed. My right hand, actually, I've said that, is participating more than my left hand. Or if you are left handed, maybe you're left. Does it you know, depend on how you do it? Is that correct or not? So the type of material should come there. The area should come there. So I have to make a decision. What are we talking about? What's the subject this week? Or your last homework, what's the subject was? Delta, yes? Don't you think this has something to do with the delta? So use it. So what is the delta in this problem? Notice this is axially loaded 
member. That means the load is at the center. It's not like that. If I put the load here, notice this goes like that. The whole thing is going to bend it, and we are not touching that yet because we don't know anything about bending yet. Is that correct? This is axially loaded member. This is at the centroid of the loaded. So this plate will be go down uniformly, yes? So it end up here. So what the, can I make my decision is based on what? What is that? Was it that length that went down? That's the delta, yes or no? In other words, delta of the brass must be equal to delta of? Zero. Still, yes? For this problem, not for the rest of the problem. Please don't lose it for the <laughs> other one. This is so funny that in the final, I gave typical problem like that. At least one third of class use this idea for something else, which I'm going to show you next. Is that, you see this laughable even after I mentioned that. In this problem, Dealt because this plate going down uniformly, the load is at the center, yes or no? Again, one more time, it goes uniformly, so that goes down here. That is the amount of shortening, but both steel and but brass are going to go the same amount down, yes? So as soon as you see that, this is the end of a static guy. The static here gives you only one relationship, not the three. The other two are invalid because it's not there because this is axially loaded member. The second one comes from this idea of that delta of brass must be equal to delta of steel. Now, as you see, in the delta, you have the area, you have the length, which will be eliminated, and you have the modulus of elastic. So I change the material, that become effective too, yes. So what is the delta now is about? Delta, everybody knows, equal to PL over EL. So I have to give you E of a steel as well. So write it down. E of a steel is given to be equal to 29 times 10 to the power of 6 PSI or 29,000 KSI. The area is given, everything given. Now we are finished here. So here, look what happened. Here become force in brass, which we call it N. Yes or no? N of brass times length. What's the length there? The length, I can give it to you. Actually, length doesn't matter because length is going to be eliminated. But let's put it for time being. The total length equal to? This is a rod of one foot only, 12 inch. Is that, it's a small rod. Is that correct or not? 12 inch. So therefore, multiplied by 12. As you see that, we are going to divide it by PL over EA. You use it already many times in this homework. That was the practice last time. This is the newest stuff now. Time E, -A. e of brass is uh, 15, let's put it 15 times 10 to the power of 6 in PSI. You can calculate the PSI, KSI, both of them are acceptable. Yes, you can write 15,000 KSI, then this will be in kips, et cetera, et cetera. But multiplied by the area of the brass. What's the area of the brass? Area of the brass is 1.25 inches. So making the story short, so you see that this become a new relationship between the two forces. Is that correct? Or not? Therefore, become equal to N of steel. Now, what's the length of a steel? As I said, we don't need the length. Because this length and this length, because these are equal, this length and this length, we're going to be eliminated in this problem. And then divided by 29 times 10 to the power of 6, and multiplied by area, which is the 1. So this 10 to the power of 6, usually what then the part will be crossed out. So you solve this one, and when you do it, this become N of steel, become equal to 1.55 N of the brass. This is exactly what I needed. I needed another relationship between the two N, is that correct? Which partially depend on the area. Notice area was participated. And also depends on the modulus of elastic. But we don't think of that. But that's the logic that you were come up with. Is that correct or not? Everybody saw that? But please, only use it for this problem. Now, in top of page four or three, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. see, you will symbolically, but this time it is a round column. If you have a round column, usually lots of columns are concrete and it's still inside of it. Everybody has seen that in their life. Is that, uh, yeah. that means it's already a composite column. Part of a load goes, if you have here a column, it's, out, it's, it's concrete, inside of it is still. Part of a vertical load goes to the steel, part of it goes to? Concrete. You have to use that method. Is that correct? Because you have to divide the load between the steel and 
concrete. So all sorts of things happen there. This is the first example, which is on top of page. That's the one. But, uh, symbolically. Here it is symbolic. We are, we are going to do all of this. These are all symbolic indeterminate beams. Some of them are temperature. Some of them are regular. Now I'm going to go to number two. Any question there? Notice I made this very simple. I go very slowly. I could have spent half of this time. But I s tell you that for you to register that idea. The register idea is this. I have to use static plus idea of delta. That's all. Now, delta, you have to establish some relationships. Yeah, everybody understand. That relationship changes from problem. Not always is constant. It's always is not this. Is that understood? You have to figure it out. That figure it out, it means you should do your homework and you should see it before somebody else tell you. You look at the solution manual, you see the picture, forget about that homework. That homework is no value for you anymore. After that, this is what, don't get this impression. Many people come to me at the end of the quarter and say, oh, I did all my homework, but I'm not doing very well in the quizzes. Oh, you didn't do the homework. I asked, I, that, I'm very frank with them. I said, okay, how many times did you had reference to solution manual? How many times did you ask your friend or somebody else to do this? For? If you are doing that, you are not solving the problem. You are only ca calculating the part of it which has only one-tenth of the value. Is that uh, the idea of engineering work is not delta equal to PL over uh, the idea is seeing this ahead of time, ahead of everybody else. That's why you become a good engineer, because then you can create things, if everybody understands. Everything is either there for you to learn, but then if you are good at it, your mind opens up. Everybody, the more you do your homework, the more you gain this, this technique. Technique is important. Let's go to the next problem. The next problem is in the same word there. Just look at this one. This problem that, if you look at it, looks very much like your previous homework. But let's see what's the difference between this one, which we call it indeterminate, and the previous one. Okay, I leave that one there because I want you to see what idea did I use. Again, static plus delta, yes or no? This came from that relationship, okay? Here we have this problem. Notice, again, like last time, if I have here a rigid bar attached to a pin, again, remember, this is pin, this pin is not moving up or down, this is the idea of the pin, yes or no? But however, if I put here a load here, P, which is given equal to 300 kilonewton, because there I have not put a load there, I just left it blank, but here I'm going to put a load of 300 kilonewton there, there. Obviously, this item is not going to stay there. Everybody have seen that in the past, yes? Because this is pin. Pin is like that. It cannot hold any load, yes? In order to make this stay in horizontal, I have, what should I do? I should put something underneath it or hang it from the wire or something or a cable. So here, what they have done, they put here a link attached to the ceiling, and the dimensions are, are as follows. There is 800 millimeter here. Now, I just don't draw the other one in order for you to see what I'm talking about. 160 millimeter here, and 80 millimeter here. Now, if I give you this problem, nothing else. Notice I disregard the other rod. Everybody understand that. How many unknown do you have that? Because this was the practice we were doing in this homework. Everybody see that? Because there you don't. How many unknown do you have there? Three. Everybody should f have no question about that. Is that correct or not? Because when you cut here, let's do it actually. When I cut here, I have there an AX. Actually, let's put it here. This is point A. This is point B. This is point C. This is point D. So far, there is nothing at B. So, so if I do that, then I have here, this is a pin, not moving up or down or going this way or that way, therefore requires an AX and <coughs> AY, but since it is rotating, does not need any movement. That's their idea of about the pin. Is that correct or not? Now, here when we go to C, again, don't make the same mistake you made in the first quiz. C, that's the whole idea of two, three weeks, is about two-fourths. Remember, so if you put here CX and C1, you are done. Everybody understand. You are making a determinate problem, turning it into a indeterminate. Don't look what mistake you were making there. However, this is a two-force member. So I should put a force up or 
down, we discuss it in a minute. So that's two, that's one. How many unknown do you have? Three, therefore it is determinate. Yes, there is no problem there. However, in this one, we have another link to support. This one, we are putting it underneath. Is that correct or not? So as soon as I put that, uh, this is why you have to be careful about your free body diagramming. That gives you the indication whether the system is determinate or indeterminate. In Otherwise, you cannot say it ahead of time. Is that by looking at it? Is that, of course, you're, I, if you have experience, you can see it right away. Is that correct? Now you can see it, yes? Now how many force do you have? Two here, one here, and one here. There is four unknown, and you have only three. So please do not many, make any attempt to solve it, because that's what you were doing in first quizzes. You see, I saw that. Whether you were taking a moment about here, then it didn't work. Somebody wrote, let's try the other point. So you went to point C. So let's try the other point. All of them is going to be, uh, but I tell you the news. Einstein cannot solve it. <laughs> I cannot solve it. You shouldn't attempt, although you are going to do it sometime or another. By mistake, everybody <laughs> understand that. Those are all mistakes. Even in ME 219, when I give them indeterminate problem, they do the same thing. They try to solve it, and I good, good luck. Nobel Prize come to you this year. <laughs> so that's the fact. So if you can solve this problem, tell me somehow in secret. OK? <laughs> it's not going to happen, correct? Because it is indeterminate. Indeterminate when you are four unknown, you have four equations. OK, let's put down off the free body diagram of this one. This one is obvious, AX and A1. I have to erase that and erase that. What's going to happen? We have gone through that. You can be uh, facts on this one. When this point comes down, this stays there. This become expanded, yes, and this become shorter, yes or no. Therefore, one is in tension, the other one is in compression. compression. So we have to erase that. So what we are doing, as usual, we are drawing the free body diagram of the middle part. In all of those there and all the homework, all the quizzes, you should do the first free body diagram to determine the forces. Is that correct or not? Yes. However, determining the forces here, we get into a little bit of technicality. That's what we are talking about here. Now, what force should I put here? Which direction? I made that clear very, so I have to put it in the tension mode. Tension mode is going away from the joint. Is that clear for everybody? Yes. I made that very clear. If you make a mistake, you may get your wrong answer here. So this one is, let's call it, let's look at the picture there. Let's call it F of rod 2. Let's call it, because that's a rod 2. Call the other, the top rod 2. Call the, the, the bottom rod 1 in your picture, the first picture. Call this one rod 2. Call this one rod 1. And then this one is in? Compression. Should I put it down or should I put it up? Depending on what? No, you have to decide. You have to decide. It's very important. Down or up? Up. <laughs> no, I just want to see what you guys say. That you see, you see, this seems to be odd. But this is in tension. This is in. But this is lower. This is upper. That's the cable. This is the post. Everybody has got this one. Means this. Is that correct or not? Yep. So that's correct. So therefore, any, if you make a mistake there, be careful here. When, if you make a mistake and putting both of them in tension, remember that, that one of them comes in negative. negative. And also, you have to be careful about the direction of the delta as well. Is that, otherwise, you don't get it right. So therefore, this is F2 and this is F1. And everybody can see that there are four unknown and we have three equations of equilibrium. Yes, you still can use your equation of Equilibrium, there's nothing wrong with that. Actually, we should use it. So sigma fx equal to 0. Obviously, get ax equal to 0 for this problem. So one equation gone, one unknown is gone. Is that correct or not? Now I have two more equation left. One is sigma fy, one is sigma m. I give you an advance notice. Sigma fy usually does not help you. What helps you is sigma m. Let's see what, how it works. But I'm going to write it down. But if I were. Uh, if you do a general problem, avoid this, do it at the end. So sigma fy in this problem actually is what? Do, don't forget about Many people forget about that one. Then they write f1 plus f2 equal to 300. Everybody understand that? Or so they write uh, f1 plus f2 equal minus 300. Is that correct? Which means eliminating this 
part, and that's why they, they solve it. That's why they get the Nobel Prize. Everybody understands that. <laughs> because they're eliminating AY in effect without realizing what they are doing. Is that correct or not? Of course, when they see it correctly, they know that they made mistake. So here is AY plus F1 plus F2 minus 300 kilonewton equal to zero, or these three together should be equal to, because all of them are upward, become equal to 300, yes or no? Then, of course, I can use sigma m. Where should I take the moment about? Obviously, everybody knows that about point a, sigma m at or about a equal to 0. ax and ay, that's another problem. As soon as ax and ay eliminated, they forget about these two. They should not. Is that because that's part of a problem? So then you write f1 times 80 millimeter. We can leave it at that, positive, plus f2 time this length, which is 160 plus 80, is 240 millimeter. I'm just avoiding millimeter because it's not, it doesn't, because it's all going to be eliminated. Minus P, which is 300, minus 300 kilonewton times this distance, which is 80 and 80, 160, 320. Uh, again, I made this very simple because uh, this is for class discussion. If you use the ratio, that's the ratio of 1, 3, and 4. Everybody see that? As I said, for just simplicity, bad simplicity, correct? So therefore, the answer would be the following. So F1, 1 F1 plus 3 F2 equal to 3. Uh, uh, actually, this becomes 4. 4 times 1,200 kilonewton, because I eliminated the distances. So it means F, whatever I do, F1 plus 3F2 must be equal to 1,200 kilonewton. This is using the M equation, correct? But still, I have, look at it, I have this equation and that equation, but there is three unknown here, except, as I said, if you will forget that, that's a different story. Is that correct or not? Yeah? Correct? So what's the idea here? The rest of it belongs to a strength of material class, today's class, yes? How do I solve this problem, which is indeterminate? I have two equations, three unknown. I have no way of solving it with the static. My static knowledge is exhausted. There is nothing more to do about this. Is that correct or not? Yep. What did I do? I, I purposely didn't erase it there. What, what did I use? What idea did I use? Delta. Delta. Can I you establish a relationship between delta of rod 1 and rod 2? Have you done it in this homework? Yes, you did. Have I done it in class two, three times? Remember when I was calculating the epsilon, etc.? That all depends how this rod is going to change shape. Is that correct? The middle rod is a rigid rod. Is that correct or not? So what is going to happen after the formation? Which way is going to go? This way, yes or no? OK, so that's the idea, exactly. So we are bringing the delta into system, and that's what's going to happen. Here is the rod oh, before the, the formation, yes? Before the load applied, which was horizontal, yes? You had many problems like that. Because this is pin. This become a pivotal point. It's not like problem number 25. By the way, I was going to explain like 25. Somebody asked me, and I forgot to mention that. I'm going to do it in a minute. So I'm sorry for that, because I got sort of <laughs> distracted. Sorry for that. Not his fault, but <laughs> is that correct or not? Yes, and you have that problem in problem number 25. You had it there, but that the format was different. This one is simple, because A is pivot. Is that correct or not? Because A is the pin, correct? Now, what is this? This is point B. This is point C. What is B, B prime, and what is C, C prime? Look at the picture there, push the D down, and if C goes a little bit down, what's the CC prime? Isn't that the amount of stretching of the rod? I don't recall, I'll call it rod two or one. Is it the rod CE is going to stretch that much? Because when C goes to C prime, the top part, see this was a rod here. Don't forget that. This is attached to the ceiling, doesn't go anywhere, yes or no? You bring this one down to here, 
that has been stretched that much, yes or no? So obviously, CC prime, you used it in some other part, is equivalent, is the delta of capital delta of C, but at the same time is delta of rod, I call it rod two or one, I don't know for one. Let's call this one two, let's call this one rod one. Is that under the rod here? Is rod one. Is that correct or not? Yes? So that is the delta of rod two. Okay, everybody agreed or not? Yes. If you seem surprised, no surprise? Okay, good. <laughs> that CC prime is equal to delta of rod two. So what is BB prime is? I wish I had that pipe that you did. This, you push it down here. This goes this much shorter. This comes that much longer. So that's the delta of rod one. Now, don't tell me. See, this is what the problem I have with the student. They draw this, they see this, then they declare their delta 1 equal to delta 2. Is that the case? No, it's laughable. You can see that. But believe me, I have seen many of them. Is delta 1 equal to delta 2? Absolutely not. You use it here 10 times. Why don't you think about it? This is delta 1 equal to delta. There, all I'm doing is establishing a relation through the geometry of the movement. I'm establishing this is the way you want to think about it in future. Establishing a relationship between, which was your question as well, that question 25, which I'm going to answer after this one. Nevertheless, so look at the distances. This distance is 80. This distance is, is 240. What do you think that relationship is? This is the ratio of 1 to 3, yes or no? What do you think this is it? This delta must be three times of the other one, using the right triangle. Don't use theta in the book on this side. This is the similar triangle, yes? Mm -hmm. One is 1, the other one is uh, uh, 3. So this must be the ratio of 1 to 3. So write it. So delta 2 must be equal to three times of delta one. This is the relationship I want, which is totally different from what I use here, correct? By geometry of the picture. So of course the number changes, this ratio changes. Your number in problem number 25, we get with that. Is that correct or not? Okay, so that's the rest is the same as before. So delta two equals to, so now delta two and delta one related to the forces, yes or no? F1 and F2, everybody can see that. So we write here, delta two is this rod. So look at your picture, tell me what we, I have to put here. Force, the force is F2 or N2 or whatever, because this F2 actually become equal to N2. Is that correct or not? Yes? F1 is N1. Is that the way I, I explained it before to you? Therefore, F2 times length. What's the length of that rod? I, have, I didn't put it here. You have it in the handout. The length is 600 millimeter, yes or no, the top rod. The top rod, the length of that is, you have PL over EA. P, internal force, time length, divided by EA. That's what you have used it in first. So 0 0.600 divided by EA. What E I need, uh, for this problem, I didn't give it to you, but write it down here. EA, E and A both are the same for this one and that one. Everybody knows. So since this is the case, I don't have to put it there because it's going to... Cancel out, very good. So if EA is the same, don't put it there because it's going to cancel out. Or if EA is different as a previous problem, I have to put E of one rod. One rod could be aluminum, the other one rod could be bronze or steel or whatever. I have to put it in. But that does not change the discussion. Is that correct or not? Yes? Okay. Equal to, don't forget the three. These two are not equal. Time, three times of delta one, but delta one is the extension or shortening of this one without any sign or anything. But that's what we end up there. Here we go to F1. What's the length of that one? 1,000. You see it in the picture there. It is in the picture on the page. Page three. I didn't put it here because it is in page three. The picture is there already. The, the length of that one is 1,000 millimeter or one meter. So I'm putting here meter divided by, as I said, EA is the same. So it's going to be cancel out. So you calculate here F, uh, F2, uh, which is FC. Yes, that's right. F2 become five times of F1. 
And that's exactly what I wanted. Another relationship between F1 and F2. Now, can I solve it? Yes. So what we do, this is the relation you want. That's equation one from a static, from the moment equation, actually. Not from sigma fx, not from sigma y. This is from moment equation. You should always do that. And this is from a strength of material. And this, in future, we're going to get expanded to such format. You can do 10 unknown, 15 unknown. Everybody understand that. Or 1,000 unknown. Doesn't matter when you use computer programming. And then you plug in here, there, you calculate F1. F1 uh, become equal to 75 uh, kilonewton, and F2 become 375 kilonewton. When I gave this question as a quiz, some people panic a little bit. They saw here it is 300. They saw this one is going up 375. And that they saw this one is also going up equal to 75. Then they thought they made a mistake because this is 300. The sum of these two should be 300. You see what I'm talking about? So, but this is 370 going up. This is three. That's 450. So they thought they make a mistake. Thought they changed the sign of this one. That's a no-no. Actually, they, they, this three should not be equal to zero. Is that correct? Or because there is an a y. a y there. Very good. Is that correct? Actually, the a y will be the balance. Is that correct? But we don't need a y because we don't want that. The question is, now we can solve anything. We can solve delta, epsilon, sigma, et cetera, et cetera. The problem is solved. Did you see that? Now, there are some temperature problems. There are another problem that requires a little bit more thinking that I'm going to do it this way. I don't know how much time I have. Maybe I have, let's see. Oh, we have 10 minutes, but I want to I said, I don't want to miss your, your question, because you had a question about problem, or she, she left, so she, yeah, she's coming back. Anyway, there is a question about problem number 25, which takes a few minutes to discuss it. So please uh, go back to that problem, because many people, several people actually sent me, asked me that question, but I said I will explain it in class. Now, the rest of the question, there are, there are lots of other questions to be asked. What is the stress in this member? So the stress is force over it. What's the strain? Everybody see that? What's delta? This and that. But that's beside the point. I'm just giving the, the new idea. The rest happen exactly like that. As soon as you find the forces, you are back to a square one. Everybody understand? We can answer any question we want to. Is that understood? Yes. What, how much, for example, this point move, move? As soon as I have F, I have delta 1, I have delta 2, I can calculate how much this point moved up, down. Is that understood? I'm not doing that because that is repeat. Usually this is the case. So I'm only giving you the idea of the... Now, going to problem number, which problem was it? 25. The, let me take a look of here, one of the number, uh, because I wrote in the one of the solution, because I don't like the way they do it in the solution manual anyway, so that's it's confusing. I hope that you understand by now that part. Especially for this problem, do not go to the solution manual. It's all confusing. Do it the way I explained it to you. That In your problem 25, this was the idea. In the one I did on in class, I gave you the p-value. Here, they are not giving you the p-value, so you are thinking you have too many unknown. Is that correct or not? However, this was the problem. So there was a problem here. There is a link there. So for those of you who remember that, that's all. There is a link here, and there is a p here. Is that correct or not? Yes? Now, what happened here? You have to calculate this force as if P is given. You have to calculate all the forces and all the delta in terms of P, which many of you did. Is that correct or not? Then this item is going to rotate like that. This part because going down, this part going up, exactly what I did in class there. So that's going to, oh, this is the exaggeration. So this is going to be like that, going like that. Is that correct? This is before and this is? After. So this becomes the pivotal port. We talk about that in the class. Yes or no? What you did, if you calculate these forces in terms of P, because you take the moment about here, find this force and this force in terms of P. I don't have that one, but you can do that yourself. Actually, this becomes FBD. Become, this becomes 1.56P, uh, and this becomes 0556 P. So if you take the moment about here or there, this in terms of P. Then you calculate delta in terms of P, which many P. This one 
ends up to be equal to, as I here, I have it here. This one end up to be equal to delta, let's see, the, the, this one delta C. So let's put here C and B. Delta C ends up here, I don't want to give you the wrong answer, 3.86 times 10 to the power of minus 9P, something like that, in terms of P, yes? And then you end up with this delta, exactly what we were doing there, but this is in effect, this is determinant, that's indeterminate, that this one also become equal to, because that's the, what that rod, because this rod, when it rotates, it becomes like that. Everybody see what I'm talking about. This one become extended, this become extended, both of them are under tension. This, this, this quantity become equal to, according here, to 13.89 times 10 to the power of minus 9 times P. Yeah. And then people stopped there because they didn't know what to do with it because they thought the P. But ratio has nothing to do with the value of P. That's the key. You see, look, look at it. If all depends in this number and that number, who cares about the P or cares about 10 to the power of 9? Let's say this is 4 like our problem. This is 1. What does it mean? It means this displacement is four times that, that, that's all you need, is that curve, because P become eliminated. So that way, you have the ratio, then you can find out the, the, the distances. Is that understood? Yes? So first, you use this. So you use this. Let's call this one X, and because the total is 225. Remember, this one was 225, from here to here, and here, the total is 200. The rest is geometry. So you said this is X. This is 225 minus x for total of 20. Then you use the ratio. You say, okay, this over that equal to this over that. Yes or no? Correct? You see that? Yep. Because the total length between them. Um, it's 225. It's given. You see, this is, this, is the, this is the way I think of it. It's totally different. You see? Look what I'm saying that. This and this is repeated. If this is 1, this is 4, what do you think the ratio between these two is? Using geometry, it is ratio of one to many of you don't see it that way because you use this calculator so often. Think about it. Is that correct or not? No. <laughs> I have this problem in a static too. I, I get this. Many people want to calculate this leg. They have, I give them this is equal to 10 inches. I give this equal to 30 inches. They have problem with do. They have to use loss of geometry. This is ratio. It's very simple. If this is at the middle, if this is 15 and 15, this must be 5. Yes or no? That's what I was using last time. If this is the ratio of, let's say, this is 20 inches and this is 10 inches, this is ratio of 2 to 1. This must be 2 thirds of 10. Is that this is? You use your calculator or sine theta or cosine theta, <laughs> this and that, without even thinking what you are doing. The way I want you to, I want to change that system. I want you to think about everything. Everything has a logic. That logic is missing. That logic is injuring work. Did you get it? Yes or no? So what I'm saying that after you do that doesn't matter. Let's look. look this ratio over this ratio, let's write it down. 3.86, if that makes you very happy. <laughs> 10 to the power of minus 9. P, this over that should be this over that. Yes, everybody knows that. Yes or no? That divided by this one, 1389 times 10 to the power of minus 9. P equal to x over what? 200? It looks like the unknown, but that P and that P and that one and that one eliminate. So it becomes the ratio. Is that correct or not? Yes? When you use that ratio, this X end up to be 100, uh, I did it, 62 and a half, not 100, just 60 and two and a half millimeter. This becomes 225 minus this, which is 162 and a half millimeter. Everybody understand that? Then you come to this triangle, you have this, you have that, you have that, and this is given. Everybody understand? This is given 0.35 millimeter, so you use that ratio to calculate the value of the P. Is that understood? Yes? You got the answer? Okay? Well, you can do that. The rest is math. <laughs> okay, now let's do it here. So again, one more time. Here I can write 13.89 times 10 to the power of minus 9p, which is this, over that, 
which is 162 and a half, equal to this, which is 0.35 millimeter, which I have to multiply by minus t because everything is in meter, everything is in near, uh, Pascal. That divided this over that equal to this over that. Yes or no? But what's that length? That's 162 and a half plus this one. That one was given 125. So the total length from here to here is 162 and a half plus, which is again using the similar triangle. Okay, I don't want to cut into your quiz time any longer. So let's, let's leave it at that. It is a similar triangle. 0.35 is given, so you calculate the value of P, which is exactly what we are supposed to do. Let's, let's go to the quiz. This quiz is very simple, guys.